Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great week. I am Kitsune Fuzzy and welcome to another entry in my indie games devlog. I read that many of you would like to see bigger levels and believe me, so do I. I just don't have many ideas on how to structure them at the moment. But I started by extending the first level a little bit. Not much, but it's something. For this I have added an extra island that will be accessible by jumping over floating platforms. This would also become the first reasonable challenge with the risk to fall off the stage in this level. It is also good in terms of challenge progression. First you can roll and jump to practice and at this point you're gonna get tested. And of course I decorated this place with trees and flowers and placed two robots here. Now talking about the robots, oh what a segue. I noticed that the blend in and blend out times that you can set in animation montages don't seem to play any role when it comes to blending between montage sections. So I had to think of something else. There seems to be a blend pose by int node in animation blueprints. But I would prefer playing animations by name rather than some random number. So I set up an enum with possible animation states for enemies, since you can convert enum entries to integers. I also added a play rate and blend time variable to all states that I can then adjust through script. And then reworked my blend to animation function. As far as I'm aware, accessing blueprint variables through C++ is kind of weird. It should be possible, maybe, but I just want to get it to work. So I made the blend to animation function blueprint implementable. That means it's a C++ function that I can use normally in code but its actual functionality will have to be implemented in Blueprint. And in Blueprints it's super easy to access variables of other Blueprints. So from there I access the animation Blueprint and change the current animation enum, play rate and blend time. Ugh, so complicated. I just had to take care of a few cases where after an animation has finished it should automatically switch to another one. For example the attack animation. Since it shouldn't loop and just play the idle animation after it has finished. I did this by using animation notifiers. When playback reaches these notifiers it can trigger a function call in the animation blueprint. And from there I just tell it to switch to idle. It's a little more convoluted than the previous animation montage solution, but not having blending between animations bothered me a little too much. Since my attention span was now reaching its limits with the robot gorilla I started making the floating platforms. I built a fairly simple platform mesh with a propeller at the bottom. Then I created a high poly mesh and blender with a few holes on the top where I used two array modifiers to build a grid of cylinders that I then booleaned out of the platform. For the propellers I had a plan. I vertex painted the whole mesh black and just the propellers in red. And you will soon see why. Now I did a quick UV unwrap and slapped a bronze material on it in Substance Painter. Then in Unreal I created the material and here is where the vertex painting comes into play. I used the same material nodes that I used in the collectible shader that rotates them. But I multiplied the rotation by the vertex color's red value. So it basically creates a mask for just the propeller and only rotates this part of the mesh. Finally I gave the whole platform some up and down movement in blueprint. This can't be done in the material since we need the collision to also move in this case. I then placed some arrow signs and a checkpoint before the platforms, so in case you fall down here you don't have to come back from the very start. I still need to do a new checkpoint model. Uh, maybe next week. Then I did some cleanup of the level geometry and added some light rays to the end. And went back to the gorilla yet again. It still needed a confusion or thinking animation when it loses track of the player, so I quickly made one, imported it into the engine and added it to the animation blueprint. Next I wanted to add sound effects to the animations, so I dug through my sound packs that I have picked up in the past to find some robotic or mechanic sounds for the movement, and added them to all the animation clips with play sound notifiers. In the same way I have added some cloud particles into the mix for when he stomps on the ground. I don't know why the model suddenly started glowing and it even came back after restarting the editor. It got me a little worried but there didn't seem to be any other side effects, so I guess okay for now. Anyway, I also added a few sockets to the bone structure to better position the particle emitter locations at the hands and feet. And it all seemed to work out just fine. Finally I wanted to add some visual indicators for when he notices or loses track of the player. For that I modeled a spiky, uh, 
what would you call this uh, quarter circle thing? And the question mark. That one is easier to describe. I simply used a text mesh for that, extruded and beveled it. Time for a quick check in the engine and it looks nice. Then I added them to the enemy base class since they all should have these indicators. And automatically attach them to a reaction socket when they find it in the model's bone structure. I'm really not happy about what I'm going to do here. I wish Unreal had something like Unity's coroutines that you can just start in code and they run on their own outside the class's tick function. I made the triggers for the effects blueprint implementable so I can start a timeline from there. But that means I will have to add this to every single enemy I am going to add in blueprint. But if it's only like 10 to 15 enemies, if it even gets there, it should be manageable. I even created an external curve for the timeline to use, so even if I change the timing there, that would be the same for all of the enemies and I don't have to go and edit every single timeline to apply changes. So it's bad, but it's not that bad. And after adjusting the timings a bit, everything seemed fine. Sounds, particle effects, notice and lost indicators and the animations were blending correctly. So this is it for this week. And as always, I want to thank my patrons Yaya Danbus, Nathaniel Page, Ori Don't Official and every smaller supporter who helped making this project possible. And if you enjoyed these kinds of videos, please consider showing this with a click on the like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you don't want to miss the next entries in my devlog, then SUPER SMASH the red subscribe button. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye!